Hi guys, Charlotte here and welcome to Teddy Oblada. We're here with Boston Manor. Do you want to introduce yourself and what you do in the band? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Mike and I play guitar in Boston Manor. Just released a new album. How are you feeling now? Uh, very excited and very relieved. Like we, um, we we've been kind of like working on this record now for about I'd say two years. Um, pretty much as soon as we released Be Nothing. Uh, so yeah, we're just really excited to get it out. Um, the response has been incredible, and uh, yeah, it's. Um, I think I don't even know if we were that nervous about it because we we love the record so much. Um, you know, we, we kind of didn't even really think about anyone else. So, uh, very, <laughs> very selfish, but yeah. <laughs> so obviously you've played a few release shows so far before kicking off the tour. How have they been? Uh, amazing. I mean, as you know, you were yeah. one of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been, the response has been amazing. Like, um, we, because I think the album's only been out for a week. Uh, maybe just over a week. And um, people already know the words. As soon as we start playing, people start going nuts. It's like the the show last night in Bristol was absolute chaos. Like yeah, it was it was amazing. So uh, yeah, it's been uh, really crazy. So obviously, as you said, you kicked off the tour yesterday in Bristol. Uh, what are you looking forward to about the rest of the tour? Um, I'm looking forward to settling into a nice little tour routine and uh, not feeling the aches and pains anymore. So yeah, no, we're we're excited to play. We're playing London tonight, Electric Ballroom, and it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. Um, looking forward to playing our hometown as well, uh, Gorilla um, in Manchester. It's going to be really cool. Uh, not really our hometown, but it's the closest we'll get. I was to say. Our hometown, so, you know, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Obviously, you've got brilliant supports. How were those guys chosen? How were they chosen? Yeah. Uh, just because we selfishly just wanted to be able to watch every band every night. That's exactly um, what we want. That's, well. that's the only thing that we do. Yeah, we were just like, yeah, it was very selfish. We were like. Um, and not only that, but they're our friends as well. Like we we talked with um, uh, both Wallflower and Microwave before. We did all of Warped to with Microwave. Uh, Wallflower did our first headline headline run, and um, yeah, we just wanted to you know chill with our mates for a bit. So, so perfect opportunity. So obviously, let's get into the album. Halo, Bad Machine, England Streaming, all phenomenal singles. Uh, what made you choose these three in particular? Though? Um, I think mainly because. I don't really know because like all three songs I feel like are quite different from each other and uh, I think there's like a sense of like even though they're quite heavy there's a sense of like um, I guess like poppiness to them um, and I think that kind of works really well you know to kind of introduce the new sound but also with hooks that can you know that our older listeners are familiar with um, and I think it kind of worked almost in a sense of like like it kind of bridged the gap almost in a sense where like um, I guess like because we had like Be Nothing and then we did Drowning Gold and then we released these three singles and I feel like it's just been a general like progression to what we're doing and I guess those three singles were the best so yeah, that's why we went with it. Obviously said a few times the album's loosely based on the idea of Blackpool, the disenchantment over the time and stuff so people who don't know much about Blackpool can you give them a bit of a background? Um, yeah, uh, I've only really lived there for like um, a couple of years now um, I'm not actually from Blackpool, but uh, from the history, like I kind of like, I kind of delved into the history a bit, and it was a very popular seaside town resort in the 19, probably the 1920s, all the way up until like the 1950s and 60s, and then when people could afford to fly abroad for a holiday, that was you know it was cheaper to do that. Uh, a lot of people stopped coming, and it kind of um, almost started decaying, and um, it's uh, it's still a very popular holiday destination. Um, but I feel like it's not been really updated since the 90s, so it looks yeah. just the same and it just, it, like I said, it's like it's decaying yeah. over time. Yeah. Um, but it's got a lot of charm to it. There's no place in the world that I've ever been to that's kind of like it. Like the, apparently the closest thing in America is Reno, but um, <laughs> there's like casinos, there's um, uh, like a big water park, there's a big theme park. Uh, promenade with a bunch of piers on it and like the iconic tower um, and lovely beaches with grey water. <laughs> is it so great? <laughs> it looks great to me. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> yeah. 
Obviously, flowers in your dustbin, you've seen a few variations online in the trash can. Have you seen any other ones like that? What? The name? Yeah, there's been a sweet a few times, I think. I think, a lot of, I think a lot of American people are really confused by dustbin. And uh, it's quite nice, actually. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, it's, it's nice that people are like, actually interested in it. And there's definitely like a nice little, uh, a nice little crossover there as well, you know, like, it's, it's actually uh, taken from the Sex Pistols. So, I don't know if they listen to the Sex Pistols, but, yeah. Fair play. Obviously, all jokes aside about the song, it seems a quite a popular one from the album release shows and from I've Heard About Bristol. Can you talk us through the song and its meaning a little bit? Which song? Flowers in the Dustbin. Um, probably not the best person to do this, really, but, um, I mean, I, I probably could give it a shot. You know, we don't really talk about the lyrics too much, but um, it's kind of really um, about kind of like a, this generation it's, it's a very I think I feel like this song along with England's Dreaming kind of sum up the album themes quite a lot and uh, this song is really about like kind of like the the apathetic youth um, and also I guess like even the older generations and how uh, we have all these problems but we really don't do anything to try and fix them and we are all fixated on kind of like the wrong things in life uh, for example um, like phones the media just Instagram, uh, online fame, um, and, and I think that's one of the lyrics as well, like, uh, uh, what was it, what's the lyric, from a silver screen, I was promised gold from a silver screen, uh, it's kind of like, I guess like, people kind of always hunting for that, like, that, that glory and that fame through, you know, being like maybe someone famous or someone online or whatever, and how a lot of people never really get there. So, and it's kind of, it's almost like a myth, it's almost like, you know, these people are being tricked into that kind of, like, perception. And obviously, finally, last time we talked, we chatted about Paul Brown Mediums, well, with the other guys, we talked about sending for Afghan Dan. Uh, now you've got a photo of a little tea outside an arcade, which may be the most blackpool photo I've seen in a while. How did this happen? Uh, we did a photo shoot um, with our friend Josh Hawley, who shot the cover of the record. Um, and I think there was a group of young lads... Uh, they just walked past us, and uh, I think one of us kind of recognised him and was just, just shouting, Lil T! And they turned around and we were like, oh my god, it is actually him. And uh, he came over to us and they were all like really nice, really polite and stuff like that. And uh, he was really, really, he was like, are you in a band then? Are you famous? And we were like, not as famous as you, mate. Um, and he was like, go on, how many uh, views have you got on YouTube? I've got 10 million. And I was like, a shame then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sick, nice one. Uh, yeah, well done. But uh, yeah, no, he, he was very nice. Posed for a picture and uh, I actually really love the whole Blackpool grind thing. It's really juvenile and like, but I think these kids are actually like, rather than not doing anything at all, or playing video games or something like that, they're actually getting out there and they're filming music videos in the street. They're creating a culture around Blackpool and you know what, like, like, when it, even with rap as well, like a lot of the stuff that rappers rap about is, uh, you know, it's, it's always not not always, but it's uh, it's a, it's offensive sometimes, you know, and it, it's it's shock value and stuff like that. And these are, I guess, these are real kids growing up in and, and telling real stories about where they live and where they're from, and I kind of like that. And uh, yeah, you know. Brilliant. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Check out Welcome to the Neighborhood, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Cool. I hate the <laughs> <laughs>